Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today it's all about a post-apocalyptic crossbow woodworking challenge. <laughs> okay, here's the scenario. Post-apocalyptic world, power is out, there are, you know, criminal gangs all around you, so there's no more police, everything is gone, you need to arm yourself against all your opponents, and you want a good crossbow, a powerful crossbow, but all you have is your woodworking tools, no power tools, of course, and you have some theraband gold or other rubber types and a bit of paracord. And now we need to go out and find the right material so we can build a crossbow that has at least 150 pounds of a draw force. Actually, here is the piece I found for the stock of the crossbow. Um, you know, you need to find something, a piece of wood that's ideally some dead wood because then it's already dry and of course it's also not destroying a live tree. And uh, it needs to be fairly thick, solid, and also relatively straight. And now we need to start preparing it. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a straight surface where the arrow can glide over. And therefore we need to straighten the top part of it. And it is helpful to have something straight like this aluminum tube so you can make sure that you're doing the right thing. Okay, that was a lot of rasp work, but I'm quite pleased with the straightness. See, pretty good. And now we need to cut in a groove for the arrow. I like doing this with a tool like this here. And note that we marked a straight line on the barrel, quote unquote. And now we start chipping away. Now we have a nice straight groove, see, okay, and this actually means that, you know, we can use a bolt and it glides through the groove with ease without the risk that it might fall out. And um, note that the groove is actually pretty thick, that is because we have the same problem as medieval crossbow makers. Our bow material, quote unquote, the rubber, is very strong and able to throw a heavy object quite effectively, but it is not really very fast. So it can really never exceed like 70 meters per second or something. Therefore, for decent energy of the shot, we need to use heavy, thick bolts. Now we need to make the prod, and therefore we are looking for a sturdy, slightly bowed piece of wood. I actually like this one and will now Saw it off. All right, here it is. Of course, it's also dead wood. This means there are a few cracks, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Okay, so we cleaned up the piece and now we need to saw in a groove for it here. Note that we also marked the center of the bow. So now we have filed in our groove and we can put this in and as you see it, it will withhold a lot of force. Now we're fixing it with a bit of paracord. First I hammer the nail through, that's more like to center it right and not so much for um, uh, really fixing it. And of course you have to file off the end of the nail so it's not blocking your groove. Now we have to file in grooves for the bands. Grooves have to be deep enough so that the string is not blocking the main groove for the arrow. And now we use the constriction knot. So this way it can move a little bit, but what it cannot is it cannot come apart because the paracord holds it in place. And now we need to saw in the groove for the uh, string trigger mechanism. And we're going to do this here at the end of the main arrow groove. Okay. 
Okay, so this will later be our string where we attach the rubber. And now we can measure the distances and figure out how long our rubber bands have to be. Okay, so we can see here that the rubber bands extending from the rear end of this in stretched condition will be okay they are 63 centimeters long so these are our rubber bands and we're going to fold them of course and we'll need more of those later on to bring it to full power but just for a little test setup let's simply use those all right now we have it attached and as you see there is plenty of tension in the bands all right this is starting to look like a crossbow don't you think <laughs> and uh, now we need to install a trigger system and for that we take a piece of dead wood okay now we are installing our new trigger So, trigger in place, everything is there, and wow! <laughs> now we need something to press down on the arrow when it's in uh, the slot, so that it doesn't really jump up or so when the string hits it in the butt side. And we're using dead wood, why would else? And in this case, we're using a Y-shaped uh, twig as a start. Could also make a slingshot from it, I guess. But this time we're gonna use it for a arrow guide. So as you see, the bolts now are completely kept in the groove and cannot escape because there is a certain amount of springiness to this thing here. Okay, it is time for the first test shot. <laughs> and as a test ammo, we're going to make some bolts by ourselves later on, but as a test shot, we're using my three edge, uh, you know, bolt that I've made for another crossbow. And, um, Let's get it ready to shoot. Okay. Put in the bolt. Okay. And the first test shot into the broad side of the barn. What else? <laughs> okay. And go! Wow! Wow! Did you see that? How straight it flies and how powerful the shot is. Some serious impact. Let's do this again. I think you could hunt with that thing. All right, we have some perfectly straight pieces of wood here, and I'm sure we can make nice bolts from them. All right, here are three pieces that are straight enough to be used for bolts, and they have the right diameter too. Okay, we have some duct tape fletching and a mean tip. Let's fire it into ballistic gelatin. Let's test it. And fire! <laughs> <laughs> See that? Wow. It split that entire block and that is a tough mixture. See? Wow. Note that this arrow, of course, is a bit naturally front heavy, as this is the thicker side, actually. It's made intentionally so. Well, I'm not sure without any metal tip how well it flies over long distances. So here is a 35 meter distance. Let's see how it flies. I'm sure it will be destroyed if it arrives at the uh, wooden barn. But anyway, let's test it. Wow! That was really fast and also a lot of power. It broke 
but you can clearly see that it arrived tip first. I'm still a big fan of the tri-edge bolt. So uh, let's see how that fares on the distance. Wow! I almost hit the gelatin block. <laughs> there it is. And it actually flew like a perfectly balanced little spear. So what is my conclusion about the wood challenge? I think I mastered it. This thing is totally reliable, very easy to use. It's reasonably powerful and of course I could always add more rubber, but then I will probably have to find some better piece of uh, bow here. This one is, well, a little weak. Anyhow, as you see, it is possible to make one. And I also think that this shoots fairly accurate. I'll probably make another video about this, should this video be successful at all. And, um, well, or not, I like it and hope you do too, because that's it for today. In for distance. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.